I don't know how this is going to work. You could classify this as a poem. You could classify it as journalistic writing. Not journalistic writing. What the hell am I talking about? I'm talking about what I wrote in my journal. I don't know how specific I should be. Um, but I'm, I'm talking about the fall. I'm talking about how it makes me feel. What's coming next? Can we prepare for it? Or do we just accept it? I don't really know. A lot has been changing in my life over the course of, I mean, really the last year. You know, there's just a lot of things that have changed. And I feel pretty good right now. I feel pretty good. I feel like I'm in a good headspace. I'm level-headed. I'm taking care of things. I'm changing. I'm evolving. Um, I'm becoming a more efficient person at dealing with hardships in life, stressful events, all those sorts of things. I feel like I don't fold as much as I used to. Um, and this is just a little excerpt that I wrote down in my journal. And um, just like I did the anxiety poem video, I'm just going to lay this as the audio goes behind the visual of what you're seeing. So anyways, here's my stab. Fall gives texture to life. The leaves fall to the ground, leaving a decaying tree behind. It's a time for transitions. Ideas change, personalities grow. We must acknowledge this beauty before the winter creeps from behind. I stand, look off, and wonder where the wind is going to carry me. My glance moves to a pond, and I think about my journey to this point. I'm grateful to be alive, surviving droughts of worry I never thought I'd get out of. On the path to understanding, I marvel at my progress. All of a sudden, I've found an ounce of purpose within me. I'm grateful for this last weekend with my family, even though I'm not all that close with Lindsay and the boys, I still care for them. The Poots family hasn't always felt close. Having the dunes around made the glue act more cohesive. I ponder at how different life would have been if my dad kept Lindsay. Would I still be here? What would our family dynamic be like? I get this suspicion that my dad would act a lot differently. When she is around, he is another person. Fathering a daughter commands you to be more vulnerable. Although it's fun to think about the what-ifs, I'm content with the decisions of the past that have placed us in the present. I try not to question it anymore. I accept it. I am here now because of it. I'm approaching this delicate time of year to fix what isn't working anymore and drop the weight I've been carrying from some time ago. The fall breaks down to the winter, serving as a reflection point. I can see the future is bright for me. I must still work before I get what I'm owed. So yeah, that is something that I wrote in my journal and uh, it was just me kind of trying to put into words, I guess, on this project that I've been working in iMovie. Uh, I've been compiling just little short clips and videos I take from the fall scenery over time. Uh, I didn't really know where I was going to use them, so I just kind of put them all into a mix with each other to make this. And, uh, I mean, I really do think that right now is a prime time on top of all of quarantine all of covid you know we've sat inside we were doing things that we didn't think we would do who ever knew that we would have a year like this where so many things you know went wrong i about said potentially wrong but i would say that a lot of things have gone wrong but it's interesting because we're resilient people. We're able to adapt. 
we're able to find ways out of the mess that we got ourselves into. Um, and I just wish that society as a whole was more willing to compromise with them, with one another, because at the end of the day, we're all the same species. We're all humans. And we all got to figure out how to make this thing work if we want to survive. Um, and below all that, I think that as an individual, as we're all individuals, we have to take care of ourselves first before we can change these big issues that we talk about in politics or with Black Lives Matter movement or COVID. You know, there's not one simple solution. These are big topics. These are big things to think about. And so um, I took a class. I took a hot yoga class last week. It was last Monday, so about yeah, a week and a day ago. Uh, I took a hot yoga class with my friend Angie. And I, I really like yoga because they incorporate a lot of philosophy into their class settings so the lady that was teaching our class was talking about how the fall is a time to let go of all this excess weight that you've been carrying with yourself for too long. So things that you worry about, things that you're still upset about, things that may have happened in the past. And, you know, winter is sort of that dead point, especially if you live in Iowa. It's a pretty depressing time. If I'm going to be completely honest, uh, that's where seasonal depression really kicks in for me. And I, I, I just really like the analogy because she was talking about how we should spend this time, you know, really just dropping all those things that aren't serving us anymore, you know, just to let go and accept what's happened. And I think it's just such a beautiful idea because, you know, I mean, speaking of myself too, not just everybody but we all get stuck in the past sometimes and it's really hard to let that stuff go and fall to the wayside and I've definitely done that in the past where I just I dwelled way too much on things that I couldn't control or things that had already happened and I think on the other side of that the other perspective to the past is it's kind of beautiful in some ways that even if it was troubling and it hurts you and it made you feel some sort of way and it's it's partly the reason that you're so fucked up right now. Um, you know, it's, it's beautiful in some sense because it taught you lessons that you carry with yourself to this day. And I don't think that you should ever nullify or completely forget and disregard the fact that the past happened. You should never do that. But you shouldn't stay upset about it. You should really try and look at the lessons that you learn and how you can apply that moving forward. And, and those hard moments were probably some of the most pivotal or crucial lessons that you learned in your life. You, you had to go through the bad, the suffering, the pain to understand what you needed moving forward. And I mean, I'm not trying to sound super inspirational right now. This is just my take. This is my take on fall going into winter because last winter, I was severely depressed and anxious. And I'm not saying that it can't happen again. I'm always fearful that that's the case. But I really think that there is something deeper to us as humans and how we are tied to nature in the seasons around us because spring is a time where life starts to pick up again. You see the trees uh, having leaves pop up, beautiful colors, all the roses, all the flowers, all that stuff starts to bloom again. And then summer is, I don't know, I kind of feel like summer is more of a stagnant sort of time frame. I don't dislike summer, but it could be, it could be really hot, you know, and so I don't, I don't understand how that ties into us as humans. But then fall, I don't know why, fall is one of my favorite times of the year especially living in Iowa if we do get a fall because sometimes we don't but I I feel alive I always feel like that there's something changing in the air there's that my senses are stimulated and they pick up on that and, and there's meaning behind that and then we go to winter as the leaves have fallen off like I said the decaying trees because they all look bare they look barren there's nothing to them and then, and then you go to the winter, and it's almost like you feel like you're suffering 
inside of a snow globe where nothing's really happening, or at least that's how I feel. And it's something that I didn't really pay attention to years prior, is that I, I really am affected by the changing of the seasons. But I really think that that's a time to reflect on everything that's happened in your life and, and to really sort it out, because a lot of people just don't take the time to think about all the things that have upset them and it goes on process it just it's in your brain but it, it it has nowhere to go or it's kind of it's it's been stuck in like this alley and you just haven't taken the time to go and sweep it up and get rid of it and clear the debris so um yeah that's my take pretty much going off of like i said the journal entry that i had and i just wanted to put it behind these visuals that I've been taping uh, on my phone or recording on my phone and I didn't really know where they go, how they would fit in or if I'd even use them. Um, but yeah. Garrett. <laughs> so like Garrett looks like lunch meat. He likes bread. Garrett, come over here. He's looking at you. He wants to go in the tunnel. I said there was a tunnel over there. I'll take him in the tunnel. We'll be right back. I think he was looking at Garrett.